Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, we've got a lot of material to cover in this week's lesson, and I think this is going to be another eye-opener lesson for a lot of you. I know a lot of you are stuck when you're playing lead. You get stuck in scale world where you feel like you're just repeating a scale, maybe a minor pentatonic scale or the major pentatonic scale. That's a very common scenario, by the way. So if that's happening to you, don't feel like you're alone. That happens to everybody. And so what we're going to do this week is we're going to be introducing chords into our lead. So when you're playing a solo now, I want you to think about chords as well as scales. And so we're going to be connecting those chords with arpeggios. Now I've done this before in a previous lesson. That would be EP164. So if you want to watch that video, um, if you like what you see in this video, you definitely want to check that one out because I, I do another version of it. There I show you some different patterns, but just go to the Active Melody Lessons page and do a search for EP164. Now this week's lesson is an extension on that, so we're going to learn some, some more, uh, more patterns, some extensions on the patterns we learned last time, and we're also going to be learning how to use a minor chord. Uh, so that will give you a lot more in terms of uh, variety when you're playing. So. Uh, the output of this lesson is going to be a melody, and so let's go ahead and take a listen to that melody right now. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to play that melody, but the first thing we're going to learn before we get to that, we have to learn the boundaries that we're working within. So we, I have some practice material for you, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to learn all the different patterns and how to connect those chords using arpeggios. If you'd like to download the tablature for this, as well as the MP3 jam track, which I have in three different keys, by the way. So I've got the key that we're learning it in, which is in the key of A, but I've also got it in the key of G and the key of B, so you can practice it in different keys, putting this technique to use. Um, you can download all of that at activemelody.com. You're just going to want to look for EP166. You'll also be able to learn the melody. And there's a little bonus part that I don't know if you noticed, but I tacked on to the end of the melody the second time through, which was a single string thing. But I wanted to show you how you could take four notes uh, on the neck and, and make a really cool bluesy uh, melody out of it. And I'll explain all the whys behind that. There's actually six notes if you count the bends. There's some string bends. But it's a very easy lead to play, and it's something you can incorporate into your solos. All right, let's go ahead and get started with part one. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is the chord structure. So when I played the melody, I went through uh, four chords, and actually we're going to use those same, same four chords for both the melody and the practice exercise. So this will be a great way to practice going, uh, going into these different chords and connecting them with these arpeggios. So the chord progression is a 1-6-4-5, if you're familiar with the, uh, the number system. Um, and so what that means is there's an A chord, so it's in the key of A. You have an A chord, an F sharp minor chord, a D chord, and an E chord. It's just those same three chords, or same four chords rather, repeated over and over again. And obviously you could transpose that into any key. In fact, I've got the jam track in other keys, so I want you to practice what we're about to learn in this in those other keys. Um, if you're a premium member, you have access to that. So, okay. <clears throat> so. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with this A chord, and we're going to learn the A chord in a few different positions. Now, I did cover this in EP 164, but I'm just going to repeat a few parts of it here um, in case you're seeing this out of context. So we, we know that, I'm going to assume you know how to make an A major bar chord. It's just making the E, using the E chord shape, 
that you learn down in first position. It's an E chord, but you slide it all the way up so that your pinky and your ring finger are up here on the seventh fret, and then you put a bar down on the fifth fret. That's an A major bar chord. You got to know your your how to play your bar chords. So after that, there's another A chord in this position right here. <clears throat> And there's two ways you can look at this. You can either think of it as a D chord. So when you, we learn our D chord down in first position, you're taking that same chord shape and sliding it up so that your index finger and your middle finger are on the ninth fret. And you're just playing those top three strings. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, which gives you an extra note, is to go ahead and bar the first four strings here on the ninth fret and put your middle finger down on the second string, eighth fret, or sorry, second string, 10th fret and then your ring finger goes down on the 4th string, 11th fret, and you play strings 4, 3, 2, and 1. I like that chord shape because I can I can slide into it like Keith Richards. Keith does that a lot. So you can play the, the chord behind it and then hammer on to make that chord. So you have an A chord here and an A chord here. Now that's about as far as we made it when we were going through patterns in EP-164. There's another one, though, I wanted to just call out, which would be up here. Now, what I'm doing is I've got my index finger on the 12th fret first string, I've got my ring finger on the 14th fret second string, and my middle finger is on the 14th fret third string. I'm just playing those top three strings. But let's look at what we're doing. So when we have the tw every, everything past the 12th fret is exact rep uh, is repeating repetition for what we do down in first position. So the 12th fret is essentially where the nut is. It's just everything is an octave higher. So an, an F note there is the same as an F note here. Um, so when I'm playing this, what I'm really doing, if you think about an A down in first position, you're just playing that A chord, just the top part of the A chord, in a higher octave. That's really all you're doing. So that makes that easier, I think, mentally to think about, okay, you got an A chord, and an A chord, and an A chord. Now this is just the same A chord as down here. And so you can just keep connecting it. It's just a, It just repeats itself. So that's the A chord shape. Now what we're going to do to connect those chords is we're going to play, a, a, think of it as like a little lead part, but it's really just an arpeggio. All an arpeggio is is just a broken chord. So it's just picking the notes out of a chord. So, if this is home base, this is our starting point, think of the 5th fret as kind of the root fret because that's where our bar is and I think of the 6th string here on the 5th fret as the first note. So I think when I start this little lead I go like this. So I think of that as your first note. Now I'm going to slide up 2 frets to the ninth fret and I use my ring finger on the 6th string. And then I'm going to bar here all five strings on the seventh fret and I'm going to play string five and four. So what we have is, you can see how easy that is to do. Now just remember when I play these two notes, those are in the bar chord, so visualize that chord. We're just repeating the notes out of the chord when we're doing this. Now what, another thing I do is I slide up to this note to give it a little more finesse, I guess. Okay, now we're going to keep going. So we got up to here. Now we're going to take our ring finger on the ninth fret, uh, that's the fourth string, and we're going to slide up to the eleventh fret. And look at this, this is that chord shape I just showed you. See how your fingers just fall right into place? So make sure you play this note, this slide, with your ring finger so that you can just go ahead and make that chord. It just naturally very easily falls into place. So when we put those pieces together we have... So let me do that slowly. Alright, so now we're going to connect that last chord shape which is up in this position that I showed you. So we're going to start by uh, playing the 12th fret 2nd string and I do this with my ring finger and I slide up to the 14th fret 2nd string. Then I play the 12th fret 1st string with my index finger. Now, the, the way that I showed you the chord was these three notes, right? So I've got my middle finger down the 14th fret 3rd string. 
And the way, and that would be correct, but the way that I tabbed this out, just to give it a little more flair, I guess, was to play it like this. So sliding from here up and then back down to the 12th fret 2nd string with my ring finger and that final note being on the 10th fret 2nd string as opposed to the 14th fret 3rd string. Same note, I just thought because you can slide it gives it a little more of a feel instead of going it sounded kind of robotic when, it, when I did it that way. But what we've just done now is we have connected this chord shape with this one now with this one. Now I wanted to make uh, the, the point that this is additive to what you already know. So don't think that this is like this whole new way of learning to play lead. It's, it's not. You can still play all your minor, major pentatonic scale or major scale, whatever stuff you've always done. But now you've got new things you can add to that. And that's how I think of this. I don't go to this in my mind when I'm playing lead and just play around chord shapes all the time. Um, in fact, I usually start the lead in maybe like the, if I was doing something uh, over this, I'd be in the major pentatonic scale down in first position, or pattern one, which would be it's down here. And then I might go into some of these little double stops and, and you know, double string things, but all out of what I just showed you. And that's um, that's the thing. To, that's your takeaway. Just remember, this is additive. It's not something new. That you. Ha it's not changing what you already know and re replacing that. Okay. So that's we've just connected the A. Now we're going to go to the next chord, which is an F sharp minor. So this is something I did not cover in EP 146. We just did three major chord shapes. Uh, in fact, this is the one we just learned. I did cover in that one. I just threw in the extra little piece, which is up here. So now you have an, another little extension to work with that. All right, so now F sharp minor, we're down. Uh, the way that you make this chord, um, it's an E minor. If you think of, if you're in the caged world, uh, you learn to make an E minor down here in first position. Well, we're just going to slide that up two frets. We're going to capo or bar here on the second fret. So our index finger goes down across all six strings on the second fret. These two fingers, ring and uh, pinky, are on the fourth fret, strings five and four. That's an F sharp minor. So let's walk up to the next F sharp minor uh, chord shape, which would be here. So now we've got one here. We've got one here. Let me show you how to make this. Now the way that you might want to think about this, think of, a, if you know how to make a D minor chord down in first position, however you make it, a lot of you may learn it that way. Well, you take that same chord shape and you slide it up so that your index finger is on the 5th fret. Middle finger is on the 6th fret 3rd string and I use my pinky on the 7th fret 2nd string. Now I've got this extra finger here, my ring finger, and it goes down and this is something you don't really do when you're learning D minor. Well, maybe you learn it that way. A lot of times you don't learn to use that finger. But I put this finger down on the 7th fret 4th string. Another way you may want to think of it, you got a little D7 chord shape. You learn your D7 down here. You got that chord shape right here on strings 4, 3, and 2. And then you just put your index finger down. So however is easiest for you to think about grabbing that chord. But that's, you have an F sharp minor now. You have an F sharp minor here. Now let me make a point about the F sharp minor. The F sharp minor is the relative minor to A. So when we're playing an A, every major chord has a relative minor. And just think of it, think of like the word relative, it's like your cousin. It's a minor chord that's part of the family that sounds really good. It fits in nicely. And so if you've got an A, your relative minor is an F sharp minor. By the way, to find any relative minor, one easy trick is whatever chord you're on, just go down one, two, three frets and make, the, uh, make a minor chord there. So if you're up here in B, you'd go down one, two, three. G sharp minor. You can hear how those two chords fit together. You hear that in a lot of songs. Just going back and forth between them. You can see how they, they work together. So you got the, your, uh, your relative minor and that's what this is. Now the other point I was trying to make about the relative minor is 
look at look at this chord shape that you just learned and look how it lives right inside this the major version of that so you got your a major you got your relative minor right there so if you're playing in g for example where would your relative minor be in here so you got your g you got your e minor right right within in, in it there um, so just remember that as an easy way to get to that relative minor chord. Okay, we've learned this chord shape. We've learned this chord shape. There's another one we're going to learn, which is up here. Now that's, uh, you can think of it like a bar chord, the bar chord minor, which is the same as a major bar chord. You just slide these three fingers up a set of frets. But the way that I'm thinking of it in this case is it's a little stair step effect so we're starting here on the ninth fret first string then we're on the 10th fret second string and then we're on the 11th fret third string you can see it's like a little stair step and if I play those top three strings you get this really nice minor chord now if you wanted to make the full minor chord you would put you'd keep your middle finger there and you'd put your pinky in the place of where your ring finger just was and then put the ring finger down on the 11th fret fourth string and then you'd bar that whole thing you can play strings 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That would be more of a proper bar chord. But in this case, for, for playing lead, you don't really need to do that. You just need to grab those main notes out of the chord. So now you can, you can play the chord here, you can play it here, and you can play it here, and you can keep going. You know, so that this stuff just repeats itself. So now if you're playing a song and you've got... Uh, the relative minor, you can either think of it that way, or if you're playing a song that's got like an F-sharp minor, you've got all these different uh, voicings for it. So let's connect them now. So the way that we're going to do it for the practice exercise... We're going to play that. And I'm starting here on the 2nd fret, 6th string. Just remember, that's part of the chord. To always tie everything back to the chord so you know where we're starting from now and just remember how when we played the the a we went from here and we slid up two frets or sorry not two frets we 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 skipped every other fret so we went from here all the way up to the the fifth fret all the way up to the ninth fret in this case we're not going to go up um we're not going to skip every other fret because that would make it major we're going to flat that. So you're going to flat the third. That's how you get to any minor. So hear how that sounds minor. It sounds more sad as opposed to that sounds very positive. Just that one little flat makes it sound minor. So now when we're playing this scale, we're going to go second fret, sixth string, fifth fret, sixth string. I'm going to go ahead and bar just like I did when I showed you in the A. That's on the 4th fret, and I'm playing strings five, four, uh, 5 and 4. So let's put it together. We have so that kind of cool, very dark sound. Now let's connect to the next chord. I just played the chords. I played, literally played the notes out of that chord that I showed you. 4, 3, 2, 1. So when we connect those two now... this we're going to take our index finger and slide all the way up a little cleaner but all the way up to the ninth fret first string and we're going to play one two three one so when we put that together now and i kind of gave it a little vibrato by going up and down that's something i get from robert craig he plays these chords and then he does vibrato. A lot of people would use the tremolo, but not him. So, now let's put the two together. So we have the A. Now we have the F sharp minor. Now let's take a look at connecting the D chords. So, the first chord, uh, the first way that I'm playing that is using the A chord shape. So if you know how to make an A down in first position, you just slide that all the way up so that your this part this part of the bar is on the 7th fret and then you put your index finger down. Now some people use their ring finger for this, but however you do it, 
you're playing those middle four strings, five, four, three, and two. That's a, that's a D chord. Also, same chord shape to play our E chord, which we're going to get to last. So everything we're going to learn here is exactly the same. It's just up two frets, which makes it nice. So that means if I went down to here, where would that, what would that chord be? Hopefully you know that now. You can pause the video if you need to. This is a C chord. Okay. So from here, we're going to uh, play connect to our next chord shape which is kind of like, I think of it as the Wind Cries Mary chord shape. It's the same thing. You can see how this bar is just replaced now by my index finger, but the only note that really changes is the bass note. So we've got our ring finger now on the ninth fret, fifth string, and we're playing strings five, four, and three, and two. So you have here, here, and then we're going to come up to, think of the D major bar chord. So we're really going from here up to the bar chord. But instead of playing the full bar chord, and that's just the E chord shape, and we're barring here on the 10th fret, but I'm just playing the top part of that chord. So I'm barring the first two strings here on the 10th fret, second, first and second string, and then I've got my uh, middle finger down on the 11th fret, third string. So I've got a D chord up here. So now I've got your D, D, D. And you can keep going. You have a D up here. Look at that. It's the exact same D that's down here. So think of it. Remember the 12th fret just resets everything. So there's our D chord shape. Just like we learned down here. It's just an octave higher. So now you got... Now let's connect them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start... Uh, this is going to look very similar to what we did for the A, by the way. We're going to start with a 5th fifth, uh, fifth fret, 5th string. And we're going to slide up 2 frets not two, I always say that because I see the two dots, but we're going to slide up one, two, three, four frets up to the uh, ninth fret on the fifth string. And just like we did with the A, we're going to, at this point, bar uh, the first four strings on the fifth, fr uh, seventh fret, rather, and play string four and three. So we've got... Okay. This is going to look very familiar to what we learned in EP 164. There's one little extension on it though, so so stick with me. Now we're going to take our middle finger and start here on the ninth fret, third string, and we're going to slide up to the eleventh fret on the third string. And look at what we've done. We've gone right into position to play that D chord up here that I just showed you. So now we've got. So practice that. Now, we're going to come up to the 12th fret on the 1st string and slide up to the 14th fret on the 1st string. So, so, all doing the whole D. And then I came back down and barred the first two strings on the 10th fret. String 1, string 2, and I concluded on string one. And that's how I played that little. Notice when I went up, up to the 14th fret, I just picked it once and slid into place. Isn't that cool? That all works around this D chord shape. So you have this little extra bit that, that I showed you here. And you've also got when you went up to the 14th fret, that's the, the top part of the D chord. You could have played it that way as well. I want to show you a couple of different variations on it. So when you're playing a, a song and there's a D chord, just remember, you could go to your D major pentatonic. But you can also go into... You've got all these little chord shapes now to kind of work into your solo. They really will enhance it a lot and give you a much more sophisticated sounding lead. So for the E chord shape, it's exactly the same thing we did for D. Everything is just slid up two frets. So you have E chord shape one, E chord shape two, E chord shape three, and then you can keep going all the way up to here if you want. So to practice the E part, I went...
you can see it's exactly what same thing we did for the D. We just slid it everything up two frets, note for note. Now, what you've just got, it doesn't sound like much yet, or it may not seem like much yet, but you've got a lot actually, because you can take what you've got there, and if you're a premium member, you can practice that along with a jam track. I've, I've even got it tabbed out for you, and you can play along with the version of me playing, or just minus me, so that you're on your own. But what, what you're going to want to do to practice this is play it like this. Let me play through it. In fact, set a metronome. If you're not a premium, if you don't have the jam track, just tap your foot, or with, at best, set a metronome. You can get them for free. There's lots of apps um, on your smartphone or tablet. But here's what, how we're going to play it. solo even with that practice exercise I tried to make something that sounded melodic so it doesn't feel like you're just playing a scale that's why I wanted to slide around a little bit so it sounds somewhat melodic you know it's not so boring uh, and you can practice that slowly in the beginning and then work up to a faster tempo if you want but start working with that take a jam track take a blues take whatever you've got and see if you can take a if you're playing a minor pentatonic scale and then you wanted to work in you go to the D chord back to the A You can see how it starts to enhance it. And that's really playing is when you can start dancing around the chords. You're not just playing the playing the, the minor pentatonic scale over and over again. Don't get me wrong, I love uh, the pentatonics. I mean I that's where I go to begin lead. Um, especially when you're playing blues, you know, all that Albert King stuff and Freddie King, it's, it's awesome. Um, but to take things to the next level, um, you, you're going to want to start incorporating some chords. So, so practice that. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn a melody. We're going to take everything that we learned now, all this background information, and we're going to apply it to a melody. Uh, using the same chord structure, A, F sharp minor, D, and E. And uh, you'll also have access to those extra bonus jam tracks um, so that you can practice in different keys. There's one other little bonus that I threw in. That was a lead that goes... A little single string thing. And I mentioned this in the intro, but I wanted to show you how to do that. Uh, kind of a fun little lead using very few notes here. Um, and you know, I'll explain what those notes are and how they fit into each chord shape as the chords change. But um, that will be in the part two video. So I will see you in part two.